Australian made products and homegrown produce has become a much talked about issue in recent years. But do we as consumers make enough of an effort to purchase Australian goods or support companies that are Australian owned? Welcome to Good Business, I'm Cathy Davis and in today's episode we focus on Australian owned companies and business. On the panel we have Better Business Director and Business Expert Brian Brown and Sealy's National Sales and Marketing Manager Ross Gage to discuss Australian made products. Later we go on location to Bower's Organic Farm to interview owner and manager Rob Bower on his family run business and the importance of Australian grown produce. Finally, we hear from economics expert Professor Ian Harper on the importance of Australian businesses. Many of us will recognise the iconic AMAG logo, which stands for Australian Made and Australian Grown, but only 68% of shoppers make their purchase based on this information. Are Australian made products and Australian grown produce selling points for consumers? Welcome to the panel, Brian. Thank you. What do you consider to be an Australian product? Is it just made in Australia or with Australian materials and ingredients? Really good question and it depends on who you talk to. What I personally would look at is, I'd be looking at Australian made, Australian products, Australian labour. Now depending, the government will have a di different view on that. It can be a component. Sometimes it's a 20 or 30% component of Australia. Sometimes that could just be the design and sometimes they would be called Australia May, but in our view in marketing, if it's all made here in Australia, Australia labour and design, it should be Australia made. Can be a little bit misleading sometimes, can't it? Absolutely. I mean, you really have to read the fine print on the Absolutely. label to have the true picture. Yes. Why do you think Australian products aren't doing as well as we'd like in our market? We are in a global market and it comes down to imports. Not saying imports are bad, but we compete on price. And people, again, in the marketplace look at price. If if everyone's marketing the same way and everyone gets the same information, purely at the end of the day, they look at price. Now, products that come in overseas, it's not so much the cost of the product, it's the labour component. And here in Australia, we can't compete with that labour component to, as overseas. Because of the higher wages? Absolutely. Whose responsibility is it to make the necessary changes in the market to help out Australian businesses and products? Look, we could all, we could all blame the government, but uh, I always like to say, have a look in the mirror and start from there. I think we can always we can look at what we can do in our own businesses and how we can promote that better to, to the market so we actually stand out from those imports. Is there a way that businesses could stimulate or create this change themselves? Um, going back to that again is better marketing, the way they project their, their, their product and why someone should buy from them as opposed to someone else. Thanks very much, Brian. And that was a very enlightening discussion that's really added some perspective to the topic. After the break, we visit Bower's Organic Farm and talk with Rob Bower about his family-run business and the importance of organically grown Australian produce. back to Good Business. We recently spoke with Rob Bauer, the owner and manager of Bauer's Organic Farm, who supplies restaurants and markets nationwide with their traditionally grown produce. Let's hear what he had to say. Well, my name's Rob Bauer from Bauer's Organic Farm. And actually, uh, <coughs> this is a farm that was settled by my great-grandfather back in 1885. Uh, I'm the fourth generation on the farm. Myself and two sons are here now and a few grandkids. And uh, we, we have about a thousand acres now. About 500 of that we use for growing certified organic veggies. And the other half used for running beef cattle, certified organic beef cattle. I think we've, we've, got, a, we've got time on our side. We started off about 30 years ago, or I started off about 30 years ago, not using poisons. Before that I did use poisons, but 30 years ago I took the took the decision to stop using poisons and, um, <coughs> and grow completely without poisons which later on we got became certified organic in 1992 we became certified organic and uh, we've grown steadily since then and why, why have we done we come quite large now and that's because uh, we market well we promote well and we only market top quality produce 
At the moment we're harvesting potatoes, celery, carrots and a few sweet potatoes. I think the homegrown, uh, homegrown being grown in Australia, I think that's extremely important because we've already lost a lot of our production of primary product. The, the valley has lost beans, peas, corn uh, that used to be grown here and, gr and marketed in the frozen state. Uh, so most of the, a lot of the processed stuff in the supermarkets and in the other shops is now not grown in Australia. So really fresh produce is our last stand. So it's important that we get that connection with the consumer with our fresh produce and hopefully the consumer will support us and, and buy Australian grown. We market it any way we can think of. So it's marketed all over Australia through, through organic stores, through home delivery people through the supermarkets, some of it's sent overseas. And more recently we've just started up, the last six weeks we've started up a home delivery direct from our farm and only what we grow, only what we grow on our farm, straight to the house, housewife or house husband, straight to the kids, yeah. The two major supermarkets, Coles and Woolies, both uh, take the majority of our produce, yeah. Uh, directly, Coles has been getting our stuff directly for four or five years and uh, Woolworths have just started this year getting directly, but we have been selling them through another agent to them, through another agent for a fair, for a fair while. Uh, look, the key is to get government support so that the, the housewife and house husband know where it's come, where their product's coming from. So it's clearly marked and clearly labelled. So the, the discerning house, the discerning buyer knows where it comes from. Yeah, it's a, a few of the reasons why we have, I think, why we have been successful is because. Uh, we're lucky enough to have some of the best soil in the world here at Mount Sylvia in the Lockyer Valley. We have some wonderful underground water, it's, it's drinkable, it's like tank water, so we use that for irrigation. And uh, we have a climate that's uh, very, very good. And we grow stuff in season and we grow it organically, so it hasn't got any poisons in it, so it tastes magnificent. One of the really satisfying things for me is to see the, the truckloads of organic produce going out every day without poisons on going to feed our young kids and uh, that's really satisfying because I know they can't make a choice for themselves so they're relying on somebody else so as a farmer we we feel responsible to feed them food that's non-poisoned. An important point in the whole turnout is the fact that uh, people can come to the farm and uh, have, we have field days regularly we advertise on our website and see where the products grown and make that connection with, a, with, an, with, a, with an Aussie farm, one of their own farms and in, in, the, in the future it would, would be great to see the whole of Australia turn organic. I think that's what we should do. We're the youngest, cleanest country in the world probably and uh, we could do it. That was Rob Bauer with his beautiful organic produce and family run business. Ross Gage, Sealy's National Sales and Marketing Manager joins us on the panel now and he's with Brian Brown and let's discuss the Australian produce topic further. Firstly with Brian, um, Brian how would Australia's economy do better if Australian farmers were more successful? Excellent question Cathy. Most people are aware that there's government subsidies available for farmers. Um, that's taxpayers money. I mean if farmers were more successful will there be less strain on that, on that as well? More successful farmers mean more local employment, more money kept in the economy, more profits and more jobs available. How important is the size of Australia's population to the economy? Look, we are in a global market now, so what a lot of people aren't seeing is that we also, we can export. Being a global market, we can export. So yes, we can work within Australia and people do exceptionally well, but we can also export as well. Thanks very much, Brian. Ross, is the Australian um, marketplace similar to other markets uh, that Sealy operates in? Well, obviously, uh, when we, we make mattresses, so a little bit different to uh, making carrots or growing carrots or, or potatoes, but we are fighting uh, increased importation pressures and uh, therefore we've, we've fought many of the same challenges that the produce industry fights. The Australian made logo is very recognisable. When did you first start displaying the Australian made logo on Sealy products? Right. Well, Cathy, we, uh, we've been manufacturing beds in Australia since 1923. So we're very vested in, uh, in Australian manufacturing for nearly 90 years. 
And, um, but we started using the Australian made logo in 2006. Did it make a big difference to the sales? It has made a difference. I think uh, anywhere we can raise the profile that our products are Australian made and supporting Australian jobs, uh, I think that's a good thing. So um, hard to put an exact measurement on it, but we fervently believe it's, it's aided our cause. How involved are you in the Australian made campaign? We're very involved. Um, we do a lot of things ourselves outside of the Australian Made campaign to promote um, uh, that we make our own uh, products here in Australia. But we feature the Australian Made campaign in, in our television commercials, obviously on our product mm -hmm. uh, at the floor level in a retail store. We, we try to make that very visible uh, on our website, in uh, our customers' catalogues as well. So, you know, we spread it wide and far as... as, as, as wide as we possibly can, as frequently as we possibly can. Does it make a difference when you're selling in export markets, for instance, China? Uh, yeah, China, um, you know, we, we do export some products to China and the fact that it's made in Australia certainly adds uh, an element to it. I think, um, you know, people revere the fact that, uh, that the product is made in Australia because it just gives a connotation of great quality and great performance. That's great to hear. What have been the latest big moves from the Australian Made campaign towards improving the sustainability of Australian products? Well, um, I guess the Australian Made campaign's got involved heavily in the produce area and while that's not, as we said earlier, directly aligned to our product, anywhere that the profile of the Australian Made campaign is lifted, well, we feel we, we get a benefit from it as well. But, you know, there's so many things we do ourselves that are important in uh, competing against imported products. Mm -hmm. And we look at what can we do that they can't do. We can deliver beds to customers in three to four days time. That's hard from, from offshore. So that's one great thing we can do. We really focus on high quality so consumers uh, ensure that they, they get what they paid for and it's of a great standard. We continue to innovate, so bring new things to the marketplace, new technologies new looks of, to our product, again, it makes, puts the imported products into a catch-up position. We keep our brand very strong and we look in our manufacturing base for efficiencies wherever we possibly can. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ross. Coming up after the break, we continue looking at the importance of Australian business and Australian products, hearing from Professor Ian Harper. You're watching Good Business. Welcome back to Good Business. Before the break, we were discussing Australian made and grown produce. Now we'll cross to Ian Harper to hear his take on the survival of Australian business and products in our economy. Professor Ian Harper, I uh, know it's been said of you that uh, you can speak equally comfortably with an academic audience as a business audience, so I'm going to appeal for the latter. Uh, when we look at the economy as it stands in Australia mm. today, mm. What's your overview of where we are as a nation? The Australian economy at present is in transition from the second of three phases of the mining boom into the third. Uh, the second phase is the investment phase, responding to increases in commodity prices. Uh, those commodity prices have started to come off. Uh, we're almost reaching the peak of the investment phase. And we're moving into the third phase, which is the export phase, when all the investment that we've put in place starts to produce minerals, oil and gas for export. Now, that certainly has been very topical for us as a nation to see that as, as a base for us to work from. But I was interested in your thoughts around globalisation and the impact that that's had on a, a nation that is fairly relatively small. How do you see that in, in terms of it seems that there's been an erosion of the local mm. business. Mm. I was interested in your thoughts around the impact of globalisation on a nation like mm. Australia. Australia is uh, what economists describe as a small open economy, which means obviously it's small, but it trades openly. And, and we have done really throughout our settled European history. And our experience of that trading environment is that it's produced the living standard that we enjoy today in Australia. So globalisation is 
both a challenge and an opportunity for a country like us. Yes, it will be a challenge because many local businesses, as you say, uh, won't be able to compete against imports in particular areas. But in other areas, there are enormous opportunities for us to export into markets which are far larger than the domestic market here in Australia. Have we really embraced what those opportunities are or are we a bit nervous? I think we're a bit nervous, but I also think that a, a new generation, particularly of younger Australians who are much more comfortable travelling in the region, uh, there are many cases have studied alongside people who live in the region, uh, in increasingly many cases actually studied uh, in the region themselves, are much more comfortable with the idea of doing business in different parts of the world. So I think we're changing and growing with the region in which we find ourselves, and the opportunities are just wonderful. And in southeast Queensland and, and through areas like Springfield, Ipswich City mm. is obviously a, a, a hotspot mm. for massive growth. Mm. What's your take on, on this whole notion of the live, learn, work, play uh, philosophy? It's something whose time has come. Uh, increasingly, people will need to be learning continuously throughout their careers because the knowledge base is changing so rapidly. Uh, and new techniques completely revolutionise the way things have traditionally been done. So the idea that, uh, for example, when I was growing up, that you'd go to school and university and that'd be it, you'd go off and work for the rest of your career, that won't be the experience. It isn't the experience of younger people already. So putting all that together, as they do here in Springfield, I think is a terrifically foresighted idea to integrate people's lives, their learning, their work, will make uh, them far more productive and improve living standards. Now, you were as uh, the inaugural chair mm. around mm. the Fair Pay Commission. Mm. Uh, how fair is our structure now? I know you've worked mm. hard mm. In, the, in the Howard government era, mm. but are you happy with where we are in our pay conditions? Look, I think the question of pay and conditions is always a fraught one. Uh, as I discovered when I was chairing the commission, you pretty quickly realise that uh, what is a cost to a business uh, is somebody's livelihood. Mm. And both parties to a claim about wages have an important point to make. Uh, on the one side that if it's too expensive I can't hire you, on the other side if you don't pay me enough I can't live. Uh, so I think that that question will always be one about which there's a lot of debate. Australia's institutions are unique in this regard. When I was chairing the Fair Pay Commission we tried to make this process much more consultative which is what the Act enabled us to do, and to move it outside the more uh, court-based system that we've returned to. Uh, from my perspective, I would have preferred to see the continuation of that consultative approach rather than the more judicial approach which we've returned to, but the government, in its uh, wisdom, has decided to return us to that. Uh, I think that that system can certainly produce good outcomes. I mean, it has in the past and continues to do so. Uh, for me, I would have liked to see more openness and consultation in the way these decisions are made as opposed to having them simply made from the bench. You said earlier about the idea of the way in which we have to uh, change, and mm. I guess there's always the challenge of change and people are fearful mm. of change. Mm. But when we see the, the growth in the amount of uh, home-based businesses, mm. Mm. is that a sign of the changes? Mm. Certainly a sign of the changes. Uh, if you look back in industrial history, uh, you effectively see that prior to the industrial revolution in the late 18th, early 19th century, uh, production was mostly at home. It was cottage industry. And the Industrial Revolution moved us from the cottage industry essentially into factories and the height of the industrial boom. That changed the way society operated, the way people lived, uh, brought about dramatic changes in human existence. Here we are now in the 21st century as a result of distributed digital technology we're able to reverse that process, or at least spread it. Uh, so that the idea that people need all to be in one place, in large numbers, to undertake production, is a thing of the past. We can be involved in our homes if we wish. And so when, when we then we look at the future, do you think mm. that's going to be really then uh, the way in which we do move forward, mm. that actually people become a little more settled mm. with that, that kind of profile that you've painted for us? Yeah. Oh, look, I, I think, you know, we're, we're a young country. Uh, this country was, was settled by people who came from halfway around the world to an environment which was totally foreign to anything that they'd experienced before. 
all of the rules that they'd learned about life in Northern Europe and in Britain just didn't apply to a place like this. And we made lots of mistakes. In the early years, we nearly starved. But through innovation, invention, courage, determination, sheer get up and go, we have turned this country into a first world nation of 23 million people. Here in Asia, the fastest growing part of the world. How could we not have a bright future? And I think Australians, particularly the younger generation, which is so much more alive to the possibilities uh, that lie ahead, I think we have every prospect of continuing to be one of the world's great, rich nations, but also distinctive in our own Australian way, well into the future. Ian Harper, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Those were some really good points from Professor Ian Harper. What does our panel think about Ian's comments on the Australian economy? Ross, would you say that Ian is right in saying that Australia is capable of much more than we're achieving now? I think so. As the professor said, we're, we're relatively a young country. We're a vibrant country. We're an energetic country. We've caught up to the rest of the world in a very short period of time. So I think there's a, uh, a great opportunity for us to continue, continue to innovate con and continue to grow. Brian, before we go on, could I get your final word on the importance of Australian made products in the marketplace? Yeah, sure. Australia made products, what that means to us is we're keeping money in our economy, we're here keeping jobs, we're keeping our skills within Australia. From a consumer's point of view is when you're buying, look at the label, make sure it's Australia made, not somewhere else. Again, going back to the business, don't forget that we're in a global economy. We can export, send our Australian made product, product out there and show them how good Australian made product really is. Thanks, Brian. And Ross, what about you? How do you think Australian products will fare in the future? Well, we at Sealy um, really believe we can compete effectively against uh, imports. And I, I think it's all about offering great value to, uh, to the consumer. And to that end, um, we've just invested significantly in uh, new plant and equipment to be able to produce our products more effectively. And uh, we're about to open a new factory in Melbourne, a brand new factory down there. First time we've opened a, a factory from scratch for nearly 40 years. So it's really, um, you know, that is our commitment to Australian made fact, um, uh, manufacturing. And it's more than just a patriotic thing. We do believe it's, uh, it's about bringing great value to the, to the customers. So provided we innovate, provided we become efficient in everything we do, we promote our brand and our products effectively, and fourthly, if we service our customer really well, we believe Australian manufacturing will fare very positively in the future. Thank you very much, and I'd like to thank all our panel members today for their great contribution to the discussion on Australian made and Australian grown products and produce. Next week on Good Business, we take a look at the contributions small businesses make to the Australian economy and how important nurturing those ideas is. Join me next week at the same time for the next insightful episode. In the meantime, keep up to date with more information about today's program and additional information about business by visiting goodbusinesstv.com.au. I'm Cathy Davis. Thank you for watching Good Business.